Uh, okay, what, what did we use as our base here? This water. We had a neutral oxygen. Let's take a look at the bottom of page two of the handouts. The bottom of page two of the handout. Uh, bases. So, uh, you can see here that a neutral oxygen can be used for an E1 reaction. Neutral oxygen is a weak base, but it's good enough for an E1 reaction. Uh, and we so know that from this also. And you can also get that from this table, that's right. All right, but we're seeing here that, uh, yeah, the neutral oxygen, not to be confused with the negative oxygen. So by the way, notice that when you use those tables, notice that the huge difference that it made, it made a huge difference previously. Remember, the previous example was this. So there's a huge difference between a neutral oxygen and a negative oxygen. Uh, a lot of students don't realize how important the charges are, but the charges are the whole game. So you really have to pay close attention to the charges in each uh, problem. So when you're using that table, you have to look at whether you're looking at a neutral atom or a negative atom. Um, okay. Uh, some more things that we have to say here. Um, so what happened in the first step here? The lighting just left. Yeah. Now here's a trick question. Here's a trick question. What's the difference between, um, oh, and let me give you one more point. Which of these is the rate determining step? The first one or the second one? The first. Yeah, this is the slow step rate because this is the one that forms the carbocation. It's difficult to form the carbocation. It's easy to unform the carbocation. So did I write this right? Yeah, this is the, the slow step. This is the fast step over here. So this is the rate determining step. The rate determining the, step. The I leaving is the rate determining step. Yeah. The iodide leaving is the rate determining step. What happens in the rate determining step for E1? The leaving group leaves. That's slow because it leaves a carbocation behind. So here's my trick question. What's the difference between the rate determining step for E1 and the rate determining step for SN1? Nothing. What? Yeah, because what happens in the rate determining step for SN1? It's still the first leaving The leaving group leaves. The only difference is the beta. The, yeah, the only difference is what happens in the second step. The second step for SN1 is a nucleophile joins the substrate. The second step for E1 is a base steals a proton. Right. All right, so if they both have the same rate determining steps, would we expect that SN1 and E1 would be favored by the same conditions or different conditions? Same. The same. Remember that everything about the reaction is explained by what favors the rate determining step. That's why when you looked at the handout, it said SN1 Five. slash E1. Anytime the conditions are good for SN1, they're probably going to be good for E1 because they both have the same rate determining step. What, what, is, what do you have to do to favor SN1? What's the big obstacle to SN1? What's the big obstacle? Stabilizing the carbocation. The big obstacle to SN1 is stabilizing the carbocation. But what's the big obstacle to E1? Stabilizing the carbocation. Since they both have the same big obstacle, anything that's good for one of them usually is good for the other one. So they tend to go together. So you usually get a mix of products, SN1 and E1 um, together. So if they asked you here to draw all products, we wouldn't be done. We'd also have to draw the SN1 product here. If they say draw all possible products, you'd also have to draw the SN1 product here. Well, so how did we know for this that we wanted to do it as E1 instead of SN1 again? Uh, we don't. We should do it both ways. I just did the E1 because that's what we wanted to learn about oh, okay. right now. But if this was a test question, you would do yeah, both the E1 and the SN1 so if they asked you for all possible products. So you have to, um, this is something that's crucial. Most people don't read the instructions carefully enough during the test. For example, suppose the problem says draw all possible products. Well, then here you would do the SN1 and the E1 products. So On the other hand, suppose the question says draw the substitution product. Well, then you would draw the SN1. And suppose it said draw the elimination product. Then you do the E1, so pay close attention to the instructions on each problem because that can make a big difference. So let's say we were actually going to do this reaction. Like if we were actual chemists, would we know if it was going to be E1 or SN1 or we wouldn't know? Well, remember, it'll be both. We will get a mixture You'll of both. You'll always get a mixture. That's right. You will get a mixture of both. <laughs> um, the, what the slash means here is that, so this does not mean or, this means and we will get both the SN1 and the E1. Because remember, if the conditions are good for SN1, they must be good for E1. Because what it takes to be good for SN1 is stabilizing the carbocation. And that's also what it takes to be good for E1. So again, um, they would tend to go together. So let's draw the SN1. If you like. Did you guys want to do the SN1 product here? Yes. Okay.
so the first step is the same as before. The leading group leaves. Make sure that you draw the charges. There's a carbocation and an iodide. So the nucleophile comes in. that used to be here that got into this bond. All right, and again, we're getting into the habit of always caring about the charges. So we have to look at the initial tail and the final head. Oxygen. What happens to this charge? Positive. Yeah, so it looked like a couple of you might have left out this charge over here. So make sure you go back and put in the charge on this oxygen. And um, the what? initial tail, final head, why is that? Why is the oxygen either one? Right, so we're looking at this step here, right? Here's the step that we're focusing on when the um, water attacks the carbocation. Okay? Uh, oh, I thought it was for the whole reaction. The uh, tail yeah, tail. so every single step of the mechanism, you're going to change two charges. Well, even if you just calculate the charge, the oxygen will be positive. And then the, right. here, we don't even have to draw like the H going off to the iodine, or we should draw it. We should. Okay. Yeah. Can we do it in the same... Like, so we, have to, we should do it step by step. Okay, so first of all, every single step, you're going to change two charges, the one at the initial tail and the one at the final head. So in this step, this oxygen is at the tail, so it becomes positive, and this carbon is at the head, so it became neutral. That was the thing that drove this, getting rid of the carbocation. All right, but nature is not happy to leave this positive charge over here, so we should draw now a separate deprotonation step. Who's going to do the deprotonation? Well, we can use the iodide that we produced in an earlier step. So there's going to be two arrows in that deprotonation. This is a deprotonation, so the iodide should be taking the proton, not attacking the oxygen. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, let's see. The pair of electrons that used to be on the iodide went into this bond between the hydrogen and the iodide. Uh, and now this iodide is at the new initial tail. Every single step has a new initial tail and a new final head, so it goes from negative to neutral. Um, nature likes that, getting rid of that charge. And um, then uh, we take this pair of electrons here in this bond and we put it onto the oxygen, so the oxygen's at the final head. So it goes from positive to neutral. That's how the deprotonation gets rid of this charge over here. 